A popular Southside Mexican restaurant failed its health inspection last month. And when I dropped in this week to find out what happened, the manager didn't serve up any answers. Instead, he disappeared behind the kitchen door. Taqueria La Tapatia, located in the 6700 block of South Flores Street, saw its previous score of 82 tumble all the way down to a 67. That's a failing score, according to Metro Health. The inspector found a long list of violations, including six repeats. They had to throw out food in a cold hold that was too warm. Knives stored on the knife rack had food debris on them. Workers were not washing hands when changing tasks and handling food. Those who were washing their hands were doing it in the wrong sink. Other employees were seen touching food with bare hands. In all, the inspector found 22 violations. I stopped by this week to see what they had to say. The manager on duty seemed surprised when I showed him the inspection report. Uh, the 67, that's a failing score. I just wanted to follow up and see how you guys did on the reinspection and if you guys had made some improvements on this. Yeah, let me see. Okay, sure. I think, I think it's in the kitchen. Okay. The manager went right. behind the kitchen door, but he never returned. So he doesn't want to talk? Uh, I don't We've requested a copy of the reinspection report from Metro Health. <laughs> El Potosino Mexican restaurant in the 7200 block of San Pedro earned a 79 on their April inspection. Raw beef was stored above containers of veggies. The inside of the ice machine was dirty. The inspector watched a cook crack a raw egg, then handle ready to eat food without changing gloves. An employee's medication was stored near a reach in cooler. Clean utensils still had food debris on them. They also needed to do a deep cleaning of the business. Seoul Asian Market in the 1000 block of Ritterman Road got an 85. An employee had to discard several food items in a cooler that was way too warm. It needs to be fixed before they can use it again. There was an accumulation of black residue in the ice machine. Kimchi bowls were damaged. Dead insects needed to be removed. Employees were reminded to wear hair restraints and the air vents needed to be cleaned to remove dust and debris. That's what's behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. News across America now. A Pennsylvania man is facing charges for allegedly taping a pacifier in his two-month-old daughter's mouth. And police say that's not all. They say the 25-year-old man called his friends, saying he couldn't find his toddler son. Court documents say the friends got to the house and found that toddler on the floor next to the baby's crib. The toddler had dried blood around his nose, and the baby girl in the crib allegedly had a pacifier taped to her mouth. Officers say the father told them he was so drunk he doesn't remember what happened. He's now facing child endangerment charges. The U.S. Department of Justice has opened a criminal hacking probe into how behind-the-scenes footage of fired Fox News host Tucker Carlson was leaked to media organizations. That's according to a letter the DOG, DOJ sent to Fox News this week. According to CNN, the criminal probe is specifically connected to leaked Carlson video published by Media Matters. After Carlson was fired, Media Matters published behind-the-scenes video of him making crude remarks while joking with staff and denigrating the Fox Nation streaming service. In the DOJ letter obtained by CNN, the agency said it sees Fox Corporation as a potential victim witness in the investigation. After working four years or more to earn a college degree, what can make graduation day even better? Well, how about getting $1,000 from the commencement speaker? Billionaire and Boston Celtics co-owner Rob Hale surprising the new graduates of UMass Boston when he announced he was giving them each $1,000. Every graduate received two envelopes containing $500. Hale says one envelope was labeled gift and it was for graduates to use for themselves. The other was labeled give and that's for them to give away. We hope that the, the graduates take the money, give it to an individual or an organization. I believe, I really believe that if they put the money to good use, it will become a trait that carries on for the rest of their life. And Hale has done this before for students receiving their diplomas. Two years ago, he gave graduates from Quincy College in Massachusetts $1,000 each. Well, it is something intended to give foster children life-changing opportunities, free tuition to any Texas public college. It's part of a state grant, but the thing is, only half of foster kids take advantage of the benefit. But word is spreading locally. The college with the most students utilizing the waiver in the whole state is right here in San Antonio.
I got put into foster care at the age of 16. Liz Porak was moved around from family members to shelters and finally a foster family. The ever-changing situation making it hard to plan for her future. For me, I didn't know what school I was going to graduate from. I didn't know what city it was going to be in. She said that's why college was never even something she considered. It was her foster mom who told her about the state's program providing free college tuition waivers to former foster youth. I feel like there's not much awareness on it. That could be why nearly half the state's eligible students don't use it. It shouldn't be rare. It should be something that's more common. Natalie Riojas works for the Alamo Colleges District, which has the largest population of former foster youth in Texas. And each of the campuses has a campus advocate specifically designed to um, walk them through. Riojas oversees the PATH program, which offers former foster youth everything they need to succeed. The PATH program's wraparound services happen right here at the Share Center on campus. That includes counseling or help with their classes, but they're also able to come get close here as well as the food pantry. They also make it easy to transfer to other public colleges just like Porak plans to do. Now I'm in my business degree here at Palo Alto but I do want to transfer to a four year to get uh, my cybersecurity. She's interning for the Alamo Colleges helping facilitate resources for students like webinars about financial literacy and mental health. It's definitely giving me more confidence in my voice. A voice she hopes other former foster youth will find too by using their free tuition waivers. Don't be scared of your future and take advantage. Well, there is an age cap for these tuition waivers. Students have to register before they're 25 to receive that free education. Anyone interested in learning more can contact the Alamo Colleges District. When we come back, some beachgoers getting an eyeful this weekend when they saw, well, it wasn't necessarily the latest piece fashion, but uh, you can see there some weather happening. We'll tell you all about it. Well, it probably feels like artificial intelligence is everywhere. So now Microsoft wants to bring AI to your personal computer. This week, the company announced it is adding AI options to the Windows 11 platform. They're calling the program Windows Copilot. Users click on a desktop icon and type in a request like how to make apple pie or who won the Mets Cubs game and it can find the answers. Copilot can also assist with Windows functions like changing the desktop image. The program will be available to beta testers in June and to the general public later this year. I don't understand. The beach is a top destination this weekend for holiday travelers, but this next video is a good reminder to keep an eye on the sky. Take a look. The National Weather Service in Miami says this past Thursday they received numerous reports of a funnel cloud. You see it there off in the distance. In South Miami Heights, there were also reports of nickel size hail, wind gusts between 40 to 55 miles per hour and some flooding. No reports of any damage, but we are in severe weather season and of course just a few days away from the start of hurricane season. Miami usually sees a lot of water spouts, but sometimes they go on land and turn into Yes. Correct? Exactly. I've learned nice, some things Tim. To I, I'm very impressed. I don't know anything about AI and I don't trust it. So <laughs> I can talk about the web. As Tim we knows tell. some meteorology. We learned nothing about Terminator, did we? <laughs> <laughs> Mia, okay. continue. Uh, yes, now we gotta, we gotta move forward. This always happens right before weather. Always happens. Oh, okay, so yes, we don't have any severe weather in our neck of the woods right now, but we do have some storms, specifically moving through Valverde County this hour and the biggest thing besides yes some noisy thunder is heavy rainfall. Another flash flood warning has been issued. This now does include the Comstock area, the central and western portions of the county that runs through 115 as well. These storms already have dropped a quick one to two inches of rain and they continue to slowly move farther off to the east southeast. So we're going to continue to keep eyes on that. Of course this all follows what it was a relatively nice day. It was below average out there this afternoon. We had an official high of 85. Still below average temperatures expected tomorrow and into Memorial Day, as well as additional chances for rain. We'll get you a full look at that, plus another check at the radar coming up in just a few. 
So I love whenever we say our most ridiculous off the cuff things, we then toss to Mia and she has to like be a professional and <laughs> not to laugh. Somehow she has, she has take to be all the of adult that. In the room. Yep. And then we just gotta move forward. But that's okay. It's it keeps so it interesting, right? It's a Saturday night. We gotta have a little fun. Just a little. Just a little. And we also gotta track some storms too, especially tonight. <laughs> and by the way, we're not finished with the rain chances. Tomorrow, not everybody's gonna tap into the activity. It does look to be pretty isolated, but as we head into your Memorial Day on Monday, take a look at this. We now have a 50% potential to find some scattered storms push across portions of South Central Texas as we see our next disturbance work its way through. It's not gonna be for everybody again, but keep that plan B indoor option in place should we need to bring some of those outdoor activities inside. But this, of course, is all gonna follow the activity that we have pushing through our far western counties right now. We are quiet in San Antonio, and for the most part, we are quiet across the vast majority of our region. But here are those strong but currently non-severe thunderstorms that continue to work their way through Valverde County. Noisy conditions stretching from Juneau to Comstock, closing in on Lake Amistad as well as Del Rio. This activity is generally moving farther off to the east southeast. Again, we have that flash flood warning that we were talking about a little bit earlier in place for the western reaches of the county as well. You can see here radar is estimating that a quick one to even two plus inches of rain have already been found with this activity. Here's the latest storm track as it moves through eastern Valverde County into far western Kinney as well as Edwards County. This could reach the Del Rio area by about 10:55 to 11 p.m. Loma Alta now 11:15 to 11:20. Carta Valley by 11:30 to 11:35. Again, this is non-severe, but it is very noisy. So some folks out in our far western county is likely going to be awake for a few more hours as this continues to move through. We were talking about those rain chances that continue. High pressure is going to slide east, and especially on Memorial Day, we see an area of low pressure swing across the Lone Star State. So that's what's going to spark that 50% potential to find some scattered storms before the day is over. Let's walk you through your future cast again. This is into the pre dawn hours tomorrow morning. That complex continues to work through the western half of the area, weakening as it does so. But by 7 a.m. tomorrow, some lingering rain is expected around the San Antonio area and farther off to the south. Then we just see some isolated showers, a couple of thunderstorms pop up into the afternoon. Most will likely miss out into Sunday night and early Monday morning. Here's another round of some scattered activity. You can see once again, Monday morning, 7 a.m. We'll need to monitor the radar for some additional pop up showers and storms that will continue for some, not all, as we head into Monday afternoon. So KSAT Weather Authority app, a great resource and tool to have for your Memorial Day plans. Temperature is topping off in the mid 80s tomorrow afternoon and then into Memorial Day. We're in the low 80s for context. Our average high for this time of year is 89 degrees, so that's nice. We have some below average temperatures. Enjoy them though, because as those rain chances come down next week, those temperatures crank right back up. Oh, that's definitely a silver lining. Yes, for sure. well, we need the rain too, so we're happy on both fronts. I like the optimism. Ah, thanks, Mia. So we've got that going for us. <laughs> If you've been jonesing for some local soccer, Andrew's here to tell you where you can see some. The way Tim talks about soccer, you'd think they'd be wearing maize and blue. But San Antonio FC starts a three-game homestand tonight against New Mexico United, trying to pick up a huge win. Plus, Dak has had an interception problem last season. We'll hear his thoughts on how he's trying to get over that next. San Antonio FC has another chance to find their groove tonight at Toyota Field, starting a three-game homestand against New Mexico United, and the Alamo City Club strikes first in this one. 20th minute, top of the box, Rita Zuhir goes left, shoots right, and puts it past the keeper. A beautiful strike opens the scoring. That makes it 1-0. Then, 43rd minute, off a free kick, a ricochet finds Fabian Garcia in front of goal, and he blasts it into the back of the net. San Antonio leads 2-0 at halftime, and that would hold up as your game-winning goal. SAFC wins the their first game at home since late March, 2-1. to one. 
Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. There is no question that the Cowboys' offense was explosive last season. They averaged nearly 33 points per game with Dak Prescott under center. But Dak also finished the 22-22 campaign with the most interceptions in a single season in his career. He threw 15 picks in just 12 games, becoming the first quarterback in history to lead the league in INTs after missing five or more games. He even threw two in the playoffs. Head coach Mike McCarthy said that he and Dak watched all of the star QB's interceptions this offseason, but Dak clarified that comment. He didn't quite say that the right way. That wasn't all that that would happen, you know. I mean, okay. it wasn't wasn't quite that, you know. Um, but yeah, I just learned uh, in the sense of really, it's really the things that we're cleaning up this off this offseason, and whether, whether it been uh, my decision making or the details within the play that that ultimately my decision making. Um, fell fault too so um yeah just being cleaner and understanding that like that's why i'm saying purpose is when you went back and you looked at that tape you could see that guys weren't necessarily thinking what i was thinking and we weren't on the same page and maybe that clear out route didn't understand that he had to get out of there and that was part of the interception that when all 11 are on the same page and we understand why uh the whole passing game is going to be clean my, my decision making my throws uh these guys play making them catching and run the ball all of that's going to be clean Dak also threw 23 touchdowns in 2022, tied for the third most in a single season career in his career. A lot of eyes are on Houston's first two draft picks, C.J. Stroud and Will Anderson Jr., and deservedly so. But one pick that snuck under the radar was wide receiver Tank Dell, who was taken 69th overall in the third round. Dell impressed with the Houston Cougars, and he's turning some heads as a Houston Texan. Good technician, good feet, good hands. You see him run his routes really crisp with his feet. Um, for me, just give Tank just uh, confidence, you knowing he could do it at this level, believe in himself. Obviously, he has all the physical abilities uh, to be able to play in this league fast, quick. Uh, really just want him to be able to have an impact right away. The Texans return to the practice field for OTAs on May 30th. The eighth-seeded Heat have a third chance to close out the second-seeded Boston Celtics tonight in Miami in Game 6. It all comes down to this. Two seconds left. Inbounds pass to Marcus Smart. His three rims out, but Derek White, the former Spur, follows up and gets the layup off before the buzzer sounds. The Celtics keep their season alive by a tenth of a second with a 104-103 victory, so there will be a Game 7 on Monday at 7.30 p.m. This marks the fourth time in NBA history that a team has forced a Game 7 after falling behind 0-3 in a series. All three previous attempts at these comebacks have fallen short, but for the meantime, Derek White Spurs, now a Celtics legend. You gotta love Derek White. Yeah. Miami's in trouble. Yes, they are. <laughs> Thank you so much, Andrew. We'll be right back. Strong but currently non-severe storms continue to push into our far western counties. Noisy night expected out that way. We'll continue to monitor it through the night and we'll jump on the KSAT Weather Authority app if need be, guys. All right. Thanks for watching. We got on time. ABC doesn't owe us any time this week. But they owe us a lot for earlier. Yeah.